Hello and welcome to this video which will explain additional features that have been added to the Task Tracker spreadsheet. The original Task Tracker spreadsheet was uploaded to YouTube and made available for download in 2013. There was then an update video in 2016 and I'll include in the description below links to both of those previous videos and this is now a November 2019 video that explains some additional features that have been added recently. For the most part, I'll assume that you've already watched the previous videos and so understand the basic functionality of the spreadsheet, but I will briefly go through the process of adding an additional task just to confirm the process. So to begin with, when you add a new task, you come into the blue area up here and you type your description into column F. You then either select a file from the existing list of files or you type a new file into cell G6 over here. So they have entered in the name demo file, just as an example. You can then pick from this drop down list over here, the rank that you want the new file or the new task to appear in the green zone. So let's put it in at position number two. I'll then enter a duration over here of say 0.2 of an hour. And then I'll click the blue to green arrow to move the task down into the green zone. So we can see here it's at rank number two. Then when the assistant is ready, to work on a task, the rule is to always take one off the top of the list. So the system would come along and click the button for green to orange. The system would be prompted to confirm their identity if there's multiple assistants on the list. Click proceed and you can see that that task has now been moved down to the orange area and the start time is indicated. When that task is completed, the complete button can be pressed, the actual duration can be inputted and that task will be moved down to the completed area in purple. So that's how the task tracker works. It essentially just allows tasks to be added to the green zone. Then when the assistant is ready to begin a new task, he or she will come along and move it into the orange zone, which is tasks underway. And then when it's completed, it gets moved down to the purple zone. So the first new functionality that's been added are two buttons up at the top over here, blue to orange and blue to purple. And that's essentially if you have a task in the blue, and perhaps the assistant had a verbal conversation with uh, the assignor and the assignor said, please add this to the task tracker and get going on it straight away. The assistant might want to take it from blue and skip it straight down to the orange area without going through the green area. Or perhaps the assistant just finished a task without it ever being on the task list uh, beforehand and wants to skip it from blue straight down to purple just so that there's a record of the tasks that were completed. The next additional feature that's been added is the to rank button, the middle green button over here. That allows one to take a particular task. So this one is currently second. If you want to jump it down to be fourth, you can click four from the drop down list over here, click to rank, and it'll be moved down to position number four. This was essentially a request by someone who typically would have a long list of tasks in the green and would want to reorder them. And they found that the existing buttons of move to top, move to bottom, move up one step, move down one step, weren't as quick as they would like. They wanted to jump to a specific number, and so that was added. The next feature that was added was this narrow down list over here. So how this works is you click on the cell G17, and then you can type letters which occur in the file name that you're seeking. This tool is really only of use when you get a very long list of files. In this case, I've just got a hypothetical list of about eight items here, so this tool is not really needed. But if you did have a really long list and you wanted to save scrolling using the scroll bar over here, it can be useful to type in some letters to narrow down the list. For example, if I knew that one file was named yet another mic file and I wanted to get to it without scrolling, I could just type the word yet into the field, push enter, and it would narrow it down. And you can click the clear button to clear it. And I should say that this is a tool that I find very useful. I have about 60 files ongoing at any one time. And I typically always type files into the blue box to narrow down the list and then click on the one I want rather than using the scroll bar. The next feature I should mention which has been added is if you go off to the right hand side over here and you look in columns T and X, in column T you'll see that there's availability for up to 10 assignors and in column X there's availability for up to 10 assistants. So a few minutes ago when I moved a task from green to orange you saw that it prompted for which assistant was doing the task. If you have a situation where there's only ever one assistant working on the spreadsheet, perhaps there's two or three assignors that are all delegating work to a single assistant, and you want to save the assistant the annoyance of always having to click 
um, his or her name because they're the only person that ever clicks it. You can just delete all content from rows 2 to 10. And if there's only one assistant name entered on the first row, then there'll be no prompt and the assistant name will automatically be entered into the assigned to column here in column L. And that's essentially what this text box over here explains. Okay, so the next uh, functionality that's been added is this selection box over here to choose whether or not to enforce time recording. Users of the spreadsheet can be divided into two groups. One group that likes the time tracking functionality and the second group that just wants the spreadsheet to be used to keep track of tasks to make sure they don't get forgotten about. So if you're in the second group, you could click no to enforce time recording. Then the cell up here, J6, could be left empty when setting up tasks. And then there'll be no prompting for the actual duration as tasks are moved down to purple. If, on the other hand, you're in the group that does want to use the spreadsheet for tracking time, perhaps because the assistant gets paid by the hour for tasks completed, then you should check yes for enforced time recording. A prompt will then be displayed if this box J6 is left empty upon task creation. And as well, if time recording is being enforced, it'll be mandatory to enter a time when moving a task from orange down to purple. Some additional functionality that's been added for users who want to use the spreadsheet as a time recording spreadsheet is the ability over here in the orange zone, which remember is tasks currently underway. It's the ability to have a timer which runs while work on the task has been completed. So for example, you could select a task in the orange, click start work orange task. It'll put the start time in. And then when you finish working on it, you click the end work orange task and it'll calculate the duration over in column Q over here. So I'll just edit this time over here to make it a bit more realistic. I'll make it 9.13. Then when you finish working on the task and you click the complete button, then it'll put that time into the duration box. You could either accept it and just click OK or you can override it if you want. I'll accept it and you'll see when it writes it down to the completed area, it uh, has it down there as a point two. It rounded it up to the nearest point one of an hour. So that's just an optional timer for people who like to record uh, time spent on tasks as well. If there's a task that's going to be worked on in multiple stages, for example, before lunch, after lunch, maybe even the next day, there's a partial button that's been added. So if work's been done on this task and the assistant wants to record that some time was spent, but they don't want to move the task down to purple because it's not entirely complete, you can click the partial button estimate the duration spent on partial completion of the task. I'll say 0.5, click OK. It'll then send it down to the purple area, but it'll put a notation partial in column D, and then it'll show the 0.5, which um, I entered a moment ago into the box when prompted. So the complete and partial buttons either allow one to send an orange task fully down to the purple as entirely complete, or if you're someone who wants to record time and show that it was only partially completed, but you nevertheless want to record your time for the day, you can use the partial button. So that's the end of the new functionality added. But because this spreadsheet is designed to be used as a shared workbook, so it can be edited by multiple people at the same time, I should make quick note of the fact that Microsoft has removed the share and unshare workbook icons from the review tab of the ribbon. And they've done that essentially because they want to encourage everyone to work online using a combination of OneDrive and Office 365. But many people won't want to do that. Many people want to have this workbook maybe on a shared server or on Dropbox or some other system that um, is not necessarily the Microsoft system. So I'm going to briefly show you how to regain access to the share and unshare workbook icons if you want them. Basically, you've got to add them to the quick access toolbar, which means you go to File. Down here, you go to Options. And then you go to Quick Access Toolbar, All Commands, scroll down to Share. So it's called Share Workbook Legacy. Legacy again because they're trying to pitch this as an old feature as distinct from the newer co-authoring functionality which they're encouraging everyone to use. But you can click the Add button. You can see I've already actually got it in here, but if you didn't already have it on the right hand side, you click Add. And then once you've done that, you'll see that you have the share workbook functionality, the same menu you used to be able to get to from the button on the review tab. You now just bring up that same dialog box using the button that you can add to the quick access toolbar. Okay, so that's an explanation of the new features. Hopefully you find those useful. Thanks for watching.